educational video, we are gonna talk about a group of animals that has been declining by the millions. And they are frequently overlooked by people because everyone's focused on the bald eagles and the polar bears and these beautiful, magnificent, big creatures. But there are some little tiny elusive creatures out there that are declining and it's important that we bring attention to them. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about amphibians and the global amphibian decline. Here at New Mexico Wildlife Center, we have two amphibians that live with us. Uh, we have River and Arroyo. They are both barred tiger salamanders. So you can see them in their little enclosure right here. And we're out getting some sun today before it gets a little too hot. Something that's really important when taking care of River and Arroyo is making sure that we do not use any harsh products in their cage and making sure that they have a lot of moisture. And that is because amphibians, like River and Arroyo, actually breathe through their skin. A lot of transfer of salt and water and gas happens through their skin. And so in order to make sure that they're able to do that properly, we have to make sure that they have a really nice moist enclosure. Something that's also really important is chemicals are really easily transferred through their skin into their body. So we have to be very careful about what we do there. We change their water every day to make sure they have fresh water. We oftentimes see them soaking in their water to help maintain that moisture of their skin. This is really important to talk about because there is a disease that is going around amphibian populations right now that is affecting the ability of the amphibians to breathe through their skin. And this is something called the chytrid fungus disease. The chytrid fungus disease is caused by a fungus called chytridia mycosis. And that is uh, prevalent in fresh water all over the world. It is in Europe, Asia, New Zealand, Australia, the Americas, Europe, it's everywhere. And what it does is it gets into that fresh water that amphibians heavily rely on to help maintain that moisture of their skin. And then the amphib amphibians, when they go in that water, they get exposed to the fungus. And what that fungus does is it actually inhibits the ability of their skin to help transfer those nutrients, that gas, salt, and water. And so scientists aren't 100% sure what exactly is happening with the fungus in the skin, but we know that amphibians that are heavily affected by this disease oftentimes have really dry skin. Their skin does not look normal. And most, uh, most species have a really high mortality rate because of this disease. Some species have 100% mortality rate, meaning if they get this disease, they will die. It is a very, very scary disease. And it seems like due to the large charismatic meta megafauna that we all love, those big fuzzy creatures, the big birds that we can see everywhere, this disease has gone unnoticed by a lot of the public. It took scientists a really long time to discover it because of the fact that amphibians are so elusive and it's hard to keep track of them. It takes a lot of effort to see what's happening with their populations. And so while some suspect this disease actually started showing up in the 1940s, we know it started showing up in the 1970s, but it really wasn't, uh, people weren't aware of how bad this was until about 1998 when scientists really started rigorous studies trying to figure out what's happening to the amphibian populations. They're all declining. So many species are on the brink of extinction. And that is because of this chytrid fungus disease. The chytrid fungus disease in total now has wiped out around 90 species. 90 species of amphibians worldwide have gone extinct because of this disease. Around 120 species, populations have declined by 90% or more. That means 90% of the population has disappeared from these species. And about 500 species of amphibians have declined because of this disease. So this disease is horrible and there is so much research going on trying to figure out what's going on with these populations. Now this is really important to us in New Mexico because New Mexico was one of the states in the United States that has been affected by the chytrid fungus disease since the beginning. There's descriptions of this disease from the 1980s in uh, New Mexico. There's a couple species of uh, amphibians here that are declining likely because of this disease. Um, 
One of them is a leopard frog. A native leopard frog here has declined uh, by a lot because of this disease. And another one is the Jemez Mountain salamanders. Both of those species are heavily affected by this disease. Now there's a lot of research going on trying to figure out why is this happening? Uh, what, how are these spreading? Um, because off, it really started here um, and then it branched out to a lot of different places. And so we're trying to figure out how can we minimize the spread? How can we make sure that populations that are not affected by this disease don't get affected? And how can we help these populations that are affected by making sure this doesn't spread even more? Um, one thing that's really important that's happening right now is a lot of um, zoos are actually participating in captive breeding program. So AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, are uh, really focused on helping this amphibian decline. A lot of zoos are taking in these species that are on the brink of extinction and helping to breed them so that when we figure out the populations and make sure that there's no chytrid fungus, we can release them back to those areas where they've declined or gone extinct. So you might now be asking yourself, how can I help? I had no idea these cute little creatures are going extinct. How can I help prevent this disease spread or help to figure out what's going on? So one really important thing you can do is make sure that if you find an amphibian, whether it be a frog or salamander, make sure that you're not moving them out of their uh, location. So oftentimes what happens with this disease spread is amphibians are being moved to different locations and those amphibians might have that chytrid fungus and being brought into a population that doesn't have that chytrid fungus can then introduce it to all those species in that area. And so preventing that transfer of amphibians from different locations is really important. Another thing you can do is if you find an amphibian that looks obviously sick, and amphibians that look sick oftentimes are really, really thin. Their skin is really, really dry. Remember that moisture is really important to their skin. They're really, really dry. Um, if they're not acting scared of you, if they're not trying to get away from you or wriggle around, that means there might be something wrong with that amphibian. If you find an amphibian that looks like that, a frog or a salamander, please call your local wildlife center and see if they can help you out. It's important that we get them to a licensed wildlife rehabilitator um, that knows how to prevent this disease transmission and knows how to help rehabilitate those species. If you're interested in learning more about the research that's going on with the species and how you can help support researchers who are looking at uh, the chytrid fungus disease and how it's affecting species, you can visit the Amphibian Survival Alliance. They're doing important things when it comes to this mass extinction of these species. Um, like I mentioned, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums are also doing great things um, in captive breeding of the species that are almost extinct. And so you can visit uh, the AZA website to learn more about what they're doing in terms of captive breeding. Well, thank you all for watching. I hope you learned a lot about these um, adorable little creatures that, that I love um, and that are in mass decline. Uh, hopefully you can go talk to your friends and family about this. Getting this word, getting the word out there about this disease is one of the most important things we can do. Um, join us next week. Next week we are going to be checking out our wildlife hospital and we're going to get a behind the scenes tour of the wildlife hospital for our next educational video. So we'll see you then.